why would we ever want to make an acetal from a ketone or aldehyde? Well, the carbonyl carbon in ketones and aldehydes is a pretty good electrophile. This means that the carbonyl group is susceptible to reactions, sometimes undesirable reactions, under basic or nucleophilic reaction conditions. A lot of different nucleophiles and bases can add to that carbonyl carbon. If that's undesirable, then we'd like a way to kind of hide the carbonyl group temporarily and then unmask it after we've su subjected the organic compound that we're working with to nucleophilic reaction conditions, for example. And acetals allow us to do this. They have two properties that allow us to do this. The first is that they are indefinitely stable under strongly basic or nucleophilic conditions. They simply do not react with strong bases or strong nucleophiles. Without the CO pi bond, the electrophilic nature of the carbonyl carbon is essentially gone. And so converting a ketone or aldehyde into an acetal makes it much, much, much less electrophilic. The other reason we can use an acetal to mask the carbonyl group is that we can recover the carbonyl group at a later stage. We can hydrolyze the acetal back to a ketone or aldehyde by taking the acetal and treating it with solvent quantities of water and an acid catalyst. The alcohol is a weak nucleophile. This makes the acetal formation a reversible process. This is a reversible nucleophilic addition. We can reverse it by adding the product that we generated in the formation of the acetal. Keep in mind that a molecule of water is generated on this side as well. So if we add water, a product of acetalization to the acetal along with an acid catalyst, that's going to drive this equilibrium back toward the ketone or aldehyde. So we can recover that carbonyl group later which is really, really nice. And here's a general reaction scheme that shows you the idea of acidic hydrolysis of an acetal back to a ketone or aldehyde. So we can use acetals as what are called protecting groups. A protecting group is a group that we use to temporarily mask or hide a functional group that would react under reaction conditions where we, we don't want it to <laughs> react. It's undesirable for that group to react. And so sensitive functional groups can be temporarily transformed into something unreactive, and then transformed back to their original structure at a later stage. And to show you how this works, I wanted to plan a synthesis of this alcohol, this um, keto alcohol, we might say, containing a carbonyl group and an alcohol functional group from this beta keto ester with a ketone group in a beta position relative to an ester functional group. Now, our first gut instinct here may be to look at this carbon and notice that a reduction has occurred. And knowing that we can reduce an ester to an alcohol using lithium aluminum hydride, we might be tempted to add lithium aluminum hydride and then work up with water, right? A reaction we've seen before. However, this won't work. The reason it won't work is the ketone group would also be reduced to an alcohol. So we'd end up with a diol product, which is not desired. Okay, we want to retain this ketone group reducing the ester while leaving the ketone group untouched. And an acetal can come to our rescue here. Since the acetal is unreactive under these reductive conditions, we think about having that acetal around when we reduce the ester, it's going to go through that reaction with lithium aluminum hydride completely untouched. And we can use hydrolysis to get the carbonyl group back at the end of the synthesis. So retrosynthetically speaking, we can think about hydrolyzing an acetal as the very last step in the forward direction or the first disconnection, if you like, retrosynthetically, disconnecting, quote unquote, the carbonyl group back to an acetal. And here I've chosen a diethyl acetal derived from ethanol, but a dimethyl acetal or one derived from ethylene glycol would work just as well. And now we can think about working this backwards using a reduction transform back to the ester. Since we know in the forward direction, right, this reduction would work. We treated with lithium aluminum hydride, the ester would be reduced, but this acetal group is indefinitely stable under strongly basic conditions associated with lithium aluminum hydride. So it will go through that reduction process completely untouched. And then the first step of the synthesis is going to be formation of the diethyl acetal from the starting beta keto ester. And it is worth noting here that the, acet the um, alcohol is not going to touch the ester, right? We can't form an acetal from a carboxylic acid derivative, really. 
um, alcohols are much more reactive with ketones and aldehydes than they are with carboxylic acid derivatives, which are intrinsically less electrophilic. So in the forward direction, first we form that acetone using ethanol and an acid such as HCl. Then we can perform the reduction with lithium aluminum hydride followed by aqueous workup that reduces the ester to an alcohol. And then finally, in the last step, we can get that ketone group back by hydrolyzing the diethyl acetal back to a ketone. So we see how this diethyl acetal group was critical as a protecting group, particularly at this stage, where if that was a ketone, problematic reactivity would have taken place. Conversion to the diethyl acetal got us around that issue. This slide highlights a point we made earlier about cyclic hemiacetals. In compounds containing a ketone or aldehyde group and a hydroxyl group, cyclization can occur to give a cyclic hemiacetal. And if there's another alcohol around, that hemiacetal can be transformed into an acetal in some cases. So here's an example in kind of a generic organic substrate where a six-membered ring is, is formed. You know, naturally here we're going to want to look for five and six-membered rings as potentially forming. And the cyclic hemiacetal form with two CO sigma bonds is actually favored in many cases, uh, like this, where the ring size is favorable, five or six-membered ring. And in monosaccharides, the cyclic form is heavily, heavily favored uh, because there are many, many hydroxyl groups and the aldehyde functional group is particularly susceptible to nucleophilic attack. And so these cyclic hemiacetals are everywhere in the carbohydrates, which essentially by definition contain a carbonyl group and a hydroxyl group well positioned for cyclization like this. Sulfur nucleophiles are highly analogous to oxygen nucleophiles and form products and reactions with ketones and aldehydes called thioacetals, which as you might guess are just like acetals, but have two sulfurs linked to the carbonyl carbon rather than two oxygens. And here again, a molecule of water is liberated in this reaction as it involves the addition of two equivalents of a thiol or two thiol groups to the carbonyl carbon with loss of water. So there's our thioacetal functional group highlighted in purple. And thioacetals can be used as part of a synthetic strategy to reduce a carbonyl group to a CH2, which is complementary to the Clemenson and Wolf-Kishner reductions, which you typically see in an aromatic substitutions context. So we've previously seen, for example, that you can reduce an aryl ketone down to an alkyl ketone, reducing the carbonyl group down to a CH2 using Clemenson or Wolf-Kishner conditions. But a thioacetal provides another means to do this. We form the thioacetal, and this is going to involve the thiol. For example, this dithiol, analogous to ethylene glycol, can be used to form a cyclic thioacetal. We need an acid catalyst to do that, so that will appear in the reaction conditions as well. That can be reduced to a CH2 group using hydrogen and a rainy nickel catalyst. The combination of that metal catalyst and H2 replaces the thioacetal group with a CH2. So this is an alternative complementary route to um, reduction of a carbonyl group down to a CH2. Thioacetals of aldehydes, where one of these R groups is H, can also be deprotonated at, for example, that aldehyde H. This puts an anion where the carbonyl carbon used to be, and this is a really interesting application of thioacetals in that it converts a carbon that's electrophilic in the starting aldehyde into a carbon that's nucleophilic in the anion we get after deprotonation there. I won't go into this in detail, but this is a practically and historically important application of thioacetals, converting the electrophilic carbonyl carbon into a nucleophilic carbon, and then hydrolyzing the thioacetal to get the carbonyl group back allowing us to sort of trick the carbonyl carbon into temporarily acting like a nucleophile rather than the electrophile it typically wants to be. 